and welcome to the final video of the Geneva Wheel tutorial and we're looking at the PATH workbench and how to cut the final access holes in here. I'm going to go through two methods. The first method is using the pocket face method and the second and preferred method is using the profile method where we'll just cut straight through this and uh, in basically a couple of passes and we'll be looking at the types of cuts these two methods create uh, we'll be looking at the zigzag and spiral cuts and why you should be using these and we'll finish up with a goodbye from this project and hopefully we'll be back shortly with some other mechanical projects that you can follow along with there are some in the pipeline that I've got ideas of so let's get, get to our uh, instructions and off we go. So our next task is to actually create these holes in our objects. So to leave the space for the axles to p pass through. Now to do this we're going to just first of all zoom in to our Maltese cross. And what I need to do is actually select the hole itself. So I can actually, this face that the inside of the hole I need to select. So if I come in here, select that, we can see that's selected all of that hole. Now come up the top here we've got an option. I'm looking for create a path pocket object from face to face. I could use a drilling option in here but I'm going to use a milling option. So I don't have to change my, my uh, tool bit. So if I jump up here, create a path pocket object from the face of the face. Don't use the um, profile based on face or face or faces. Um, use this to use this one or the create a path drilling object. We don't want any of those. We will just want this one here. So create a path pocket object from face or faces. So click on that. And now we can actually decide what pattern and, and cut mode we want. So I'm going to leave it at climb. And the pattern at the moment is zigzag. So what zigzag will do will actually go back and forth through this and to cut our hole. Now the trouble with zigzag is if you think if I'm zigzagging through here, I'm going to leave material um, with our drill bit, I'm, uh, sorry, with our mill bit, and I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to leave it. As, yeah, I'm going to leave it as a zigzag, and I'll apply that, and you can see our zigzag has been placed in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to sit. And what you'll see is that we've got a number of operations in here. And if we look at our operations, we've got a pocket shape now. So we go to our simulation. I don't want the drag tag dress out, I just want the pocket shape to, to be shown. And you can see this is a uh, pocket in the shape now. And you can see that our hole is very jagged and that's what I don't want. So the pocket shape that we've got in there, you're probably wondering why the ta there's not a, a tag dress up and a um, profiling operation there it's because they've been combined into two here so our, sorry, our contour and our tag dress up is are all one because you can't have a tag dress up without a contouring action. It's just uh, well, it's just impossible. So our pocket shape, so you can see, see the zigzag has left a rough material in there, which we don't want. That's the literally the, the, the actual mill bit that's been plunged into the side, moved, and then moved out. And what that does is when you do a zigzag operation in here, you get little pieces of material still left makes the hole jagged. So if we'll if we double click our pocketing shape and we'll change this and 
we can change this to a number of different ones in here but if we change it to spiral and apply that what you'll see now is that the actual process spirals spirals inwards or outwards depending on what we're going. and this leaves a much cleaner operation because what it's doing is it's plunging into the material and then spiraling and moving the material in a circular manner down for a circle of a hole. Circular hole that is perfect. Now we can change our step over percent here. I'm going to change that to 50 and see what happens. And you can see these holes are now tighter. Now for a spiral, obviously that's not going to be what we need. We don't need to actually move in that small amount of space, uh, small increments unless how much machine has problems for torque. Now so let's change that spiral to 100. And apply that. So this works back to normal. So that means that our step over there is no step over. So it just plunges in and then does Literally 100, it moves out 100% of the width of the actual, the diameter of the, uh, of the, of the piece of the actual drill bit or the, sorry, of the mill bit, and then rotates. So I'm going to leave it at that because I know my machine can take that amount of torque. So that's one way of doing the pocket. So if I OK that now, I'll just show you that what that looks like in the simulation. Uh, take the tank dress up off and I'm going to just going to zoom out and hit play and you can see that this now is spiraling out from the center and actually removing that, that material that we need so that's a nice clean material uh, piece of material that's been removed so I'm just going to OK that um, I should cancel that so I can get rid of the material. Delete the material. So I'm going to delete the pocket shape. I'm going to click OK. There is another way of actually creating these holes without using the pocketing or drilling method is to actually use the contour. And what we're going to do is I'm going to do it again on the same one. And I'm going to select the part that I want to remove, select the face of that hole, which is all good. And I'm going to click on profile base on face or faces again. And I am going to have a look at this. And so I'm just going to go with the defaults. As you can see, we get our profile being cut through the middle of that object there. Um, we can actually go on to the operation itself and we should be able to find step down. So we can actually, again, you have to actually click on the little icon here and it's at the moment it's taking it from the actual tool diameter which is five millimeters. So I'm going to change that to 15 and apply that. And that's apply a 15 millimeter step down to that. If we OK that, you can actually see that's all nicely uh, set in there. So that's a way of uh, another way of contouring or pocketing those holes in here. So hope you enjoyed that. That's the actual end to our Geneva wheel tutorial. Um, at some point I will actually cut this on my machine at home and uh, go through the different settings I'll, I put on my machine. But for the time being I hope that gets you to a point where you can actually mill this and have fun modifying or creating uh, other mechanical mechanisms in FreeCAD.